Are you nervous about the gold price and the silver price? What if we just got news from a massive European bank who's predicting that next year the gold price could average above $2,700 per ounce? What do you think that means for the silver price, basement dwellers? That means good news on the horizon for precious metals. We're going to talk about that in this video. First, I want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of The Basement. Yes, you. I'm talking to you. You're very important. We appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. And Super Chat, Super Thanks are always super appreciated. So if you heard of ING Bank, ING, it's a big Dutch European bank. They've got like 60,000 employees they're present in 40 different countries, but hey, what do we want to hear about? We want to hear about what they're saying about precious metals, and we've got a great article from Kitco that brings us up to speed on some very fascinating ideas, research they have done that points towards much higher prices for the precious metals, and there's a couple of things they forgot. See if you can pick up on them during my coverage of this article, but I'll be sure to share them with you at the end of the video. Gold rally is just getting started. Fed cuts will drive prices above $2,700 in 2025. That's according to ING's Manthe. This article from Kitco by Ernest Hoffman. There's ING, you probably uh, recognize that. It says the gold rally is only just beginning and the most eagerly anticipated U.S. rate cut in decades will drive prices to new all-time highs this month. Here's a graphic showing us yet again that central banks keep adding to their gold hoards. She pointed out that the gains were driven primarily by expectations of an interest rate cut from the Federal Reserve strong central bank buying, and robust Asian purchases, along with safe haven demand due to the heightened geopolitical risk and U.S. election uncertainty. Then she talks a lot about the Fed. Now, the first thing that I'd like to add that I didn't see talked about in this article is, sure, we can focus on the Fed cutting rates, but what's the other side of that coin? What if we get another bout of runaway inflation in 2025 as a result of these Fed rate cuts? That, too, could easily drive the price of precious metals much, much higher. She says gold prices have gained after Powell affirmed expectations that the U.S. Central Bank will soon start cutting interest rates. The question for the gold market now is the pace at which the Fed will ease its policy, or again, will add the pace at which inflation starts to skyrocket after the Fed even does two or three rate cuts. U.S. economists believes that the central bank will opt for a 50 basis point move, but it's a close call, she said. I hadn't heard that. What I'd heard is, and, and what the um, uh, what the CME FedWatch tool shows is that there's about a I don't know, 75% chance right now that we will get a quarter point rate cut and about a 25% chance that we will get that 50 uh, basis point or half a percent rate cut. Gold-backed ETF demand has also seen a resurgence over the summer. Quote, global gold ETFs saw inflows four months in a row with all regions recording positive flows and Western funds leading the way in August. Western funds leading the way in August. This shows month by month what we've had for a gold ETF uh, and probably silver ETF also uh, inflows. As you can see over here on the right-hand side, we just started to get positive inflows into the market. What's two critical points on this? Number one, the West has joined the party, right? The United States, the most wealthy country in the world. Number two, this area back here from what, about April of 23 through April-ish of 2024, we had outflows from the ETFs. And despite that, the precious metals prices were strong. This could be a new source of major wind in the sails for the precious metals market. Quote, investors 
Holdings and gold ETFs generally rise when the gold prices gain and vice versa, she said. However, gold ETF holdings have been in decline for much of 2024, while spot gold prices have hit new highs. ETF flows finally turned positive in May. And again, she's basically restating, but not bringing up the important po a point, how, how critical it was that the precious metals prices did very well in an environment where there was outflows from the ETFs. Uh, then they talk about the COMEX futures, net longs rise further. Uh, despite the yellow metal hitting new all-time highs in July, central bank gold demand strengthened further during the month. Reported net purchases by central banks more than doubled to 37 tons in July. Here's a, here's a graphic of the amount of gold being added by the world central banks. This is on a quarter by quarter basis. Uh, as you can see, uh, Q1 of 2024, Q2 of 2024, we are just seeing the central banks continue uh, to engorge themselves on gold. This is where it gets interesting. ING believes the first Fed rate cut will be enough to drive gold prices to new all-time highs. Okay, that's right around the corner, guys. The U.S. Pre presidential election in November will also continue to add to gold's upward momentum uh, through to the end of the year, she said. Geopolitics will also remain one of the key factors driving gold prices. The war in Ukraine and the Middle East and tensions between the United States and China suggest that safe haven demand will continue to support gold prices in the short to medium term. Central banks are also expected to keep adding to their holdings which should offer support everywhere we turn. Are you noticing this? We're seeing sources of support. I think we need to focus in on the pres presidential election coming up in November in the United States. I don't know that it's been priced in. The potential for turmoil, I hope it's not the case, but there are some people who are afraid of political turmoil, social turmoil, potentially. And I'm not saying I think it's going to happen, but it certainly is not without, uh, with outside of the realm of possibilities as we head into what most people will say is the most contentious presidential election in any of our lifetimes. ING now sees spot gold averaging $2,580 in the fourth quarter. That's uh, 20 days from now, guys. Gold's upward momentum will continue next year. With 2025 prices, prices, <laughs> prices averaging $2,700 per ounce, she said. So there you have it, guys. One of the world's biggest banks, 60,000 employees operating in 40 countries, telling us a multitude of reasons why we should be paying attention to the precious metals prices. If you want to get your hands on some silver, gold, or platinum, please support channel sponsor PIMBEX, P-I-M-B-E-X. You'll find gold, silver, and platinum group metals at almost unbeatable prices, ultra competitive pricing, great selection in a company you can trust. I've worked with them on a personal level for over a year. I think if you give them a shot, you will be impressed. And channel sponsor, First Mining Gold, Canadian gold developer with two multi-million ounce projects in Canada and Fortuna Mining, a gold and silver producing company with operations in Latin America and West Africa. These videos, our ability to come together and hang out in the basement aren't possible without the support of our sponsors. You can learn more about them uh, at their websites. I'll put links to that in the description of this video. Thank you for being here. You really are the most important part of Ron's Basement. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you soon.